Hi all, I'm Fritz Skenick and I'm back with yet more Stone Thoughts and Random Rambles. I mean, besides the obvious judgmental bullshit, it never ceases to amaze me the lengths people go to in the name of vanity. It generally begins at a young age, as children embrace their lifelong fascination with mirrors, and their ability to change what they see within them. Then young girls shift from their paint boxes to their makeup kits, as they try to perfect the art of subtly colourising their faces. And after many clown parodies and Picasso homages, by adulthood they are finally ready to slap on the war paint and fight on the battlefield of love. Some will even go as far as to get up four hours earlier than their partner to prepare, because heaven forbid that they be seen without their mask on, and be viewed as they truly are. The same can be said of hair, which also seems to play a huge part in the vanity game. Some just can't leave the house unless their hair looks perfectly sculpted and unnatural, all the while checking every reflective surface they pass throughout the day. Devastated if even one hair is facing the wrong way or out of place. Others try the wacky hair approach in style and bizarre colours, in an effort to distract the focus away from their ugly faces, in bouts of low self-esteem. And I've never gotten my head around people's age-long obsession with jewellery either. To my mind, no amount of decorative metals is going to make you any more attractive. I just don't get it. Is it a distraction to draw attention away from the face? Is it a symbol of financial status? When we see pierced nipples, are we to be thinking, There be gold in them there hills, and load up our asses in pursuit of it? And like most vanity-based endeavours, it's generally painful and often uncomfortable with piercings popping up in the most inexplicable places that you've got to wonder at where you draw the line of uncharted territories. Ears? Okay, I can get on board with that. To a degree. It's been going on for centuries, so who am I to argue? But multiple ear piercings? Just seems a tad excessive to me, and none the slightest bit flattering. Nose piercings? I personally feel have all the charm of a large boil or pimple on the outer nostril. Tongues. What the fuck is that about? People say it's sexual. It enhances pleasure. Oh yeah, nothing gets me going and revs my engine like having a large steel bolt force through my tongue. Mmm. Loving the extreme pain, the temporary speech impediment and all my food tasting like blood. Can't get enough of that. <laughs> belly buttons. Yeah, it offers a little bit of extra sparkle if you're a belly dancer. But otherwise, not seeing much point. The amount of people I've met who've ended up with massive infections from having it done. Desperately praying through the tears that doesn't go septive, septic. Just leaves me pondering why they would put themselves through so much pain, discomfort and worry just to make their belly buttons sparkle. I'm afraid it's beyond my comprehension. Then there's the genitals. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> no! Fuck me, it makes my eyes water just thinking about it. It's an extremely sensitive area to be in with, without gouging sharp pointy bits of metal into it. Padlocks through foreskins and bell ends, rings through labias, studs through scrotums and clitorises. Are you people fucking mad? <laughs> Do you really need to sparkle that badly down there too? Can't you just glitter and sprinkle liberally? What's wrong with you? Why don't you just slap jam on your cock and wedge it in a beehive while you're at it? I caught my foreskin in the zipper once and nearly cried for an hour. I got kicked in the bollocks and had to sit and catch my breath. Even just a small tap to the nads is enough to put me out of action for quite a while. None of these things are in the slightest bit pleasant. So why the fuck would you willingly invoke worse? Why would you do that to yourself? Which brings us to waxing. Who in their right mind would willingly go tearing huge clumps of hair out by the root for a few days of smooth skin? And again with the genitals. Ouch! Is it really worth it? And then of course for the seasoned masochist that's exfoliating. Tediously pulling out each hair individually. In the hope of a perfectly symmetrical eyebrow line. Which way too often leaves you looking constantly surprised in the rainbow arches formed. But, like most things, some take it too far and rip out the lot, later having to pencil in eyebrows and desperately hoping that no one notices that they're drawn on or that they accidentally smudge. And what is it with thongs? I just can't see the attraction.
personally, I can't think of anything more uncomfortable or unattractive than floss in your ass every time you bend over. And they really can't be hygienic, collecting sweat and methane as it sends farts off twin jets either side of it. And can you imagine reaching the bottom of your underwear drawer to find the thong is all that you have left? On the day that you have the worst piles flare-up in recorded history. Fuck. You might as well spread your ass cheeks either side of a cheese gauge grater and repeatedly slide up and down its length before liberally spreading deep heat or bengay over the infected area. Be a real toe curler, wouldn't it? Howling? Fuck me, that would be an extreme understatement. And then there's cosmetic surgery. Nose job, cheekbones and jaw. Pretty much amounts to... Break them, chip them and reset them. Kind of leaves them looking bruised and battered. Like they've gone ten rounds with a particularly vicious world boxing champion. Tummy tucks. Amount to jab into the flesh with a vacuum hose. Pump and suck and out the fat until you can see your genitals without having to look into a mirror. Again with a severe bruising. Boob jobs. Cut under the breast line. Insert silicon pouches and pray to God that they don't burst and poison your blood. Design of vaginas. What the hell? It's not like you women have to look at it anyway. And ladies, trust me, unless your flaps are bouncing off your knees, men are still going to want to shag you. I mean, how do you even describe what you want to the surgeon? Is it like going to the barbers? You know, um, nothing too drastic, just a little off the side, please. And I'll have one of those pine-scented air fresheners for that new vag smell. And don't even get me started on those so-called appointed fashion gurus. Some superficial bitch tearing into someone for how they look and people flock like sheep and hang on their every word. Unfucking believable I might be wrong. I really don't know anymore. But if you verbally abuse someone and reduce them to tears over their appearance, isn't that tantamount to bullying? And the and shocking that it's considered entertainment. She's black, lesbian and disabled. Why don't you victimise her about that too? You stuck-up, shallow, venomous bitch. I mean, what is the PC message here? It's okay to be intolerant of people based on their appearance and their clothes they wear, providing they don't belong to a minority group. It makes me sick, it really does. And what would happen to these shallow bastards if the world hit a huge natural disaster? What use would they be in the salvation of humanity? Would their contribution be to tell you that the rags you're wearing are not colour coordinated? To tell you that the ash and blood in your hair are not a good look for you? They would be useless. They would serve no purpose beyond food stock if things really got that bad. Is superficial appearance really so important? Our surface looks really that imperative that we should embrace every fashion fad. Have we really become that shallow as a race that we dismiss substance and depth? in favour of pursuing external beauty. A sad day indeed, if this truly is the case. <laughs> so sorry, I went into rant mode there. I thought weed was supposed to chill me out. Either I'd built up a tolerance or I'd been ripped off. Just my friggin' luck either way. Oh well, see you next time.